What we're going to do is we're going to do some hand, hand movements. I'm going to show you a bunch of, of hand movements and you can pick out the ones that you like that you feel are helping. Um, so instead of doing like massaging our hands for 10 minutes, what we're going to do is we're going to do each movement maybe five to seven times just so you can see because we're going to go through a lot of things. Um, so what happens is as we age, you probably have noticed that, our bodies age and blood, blood and energy recede from our, from our um, extremities. And so we have a lot of problems with our hands and our feet as we age, because that's, that's where it starts as the energy starts withdrawing into our body. So what we want to do is we want to counteract that. And so we want to get blood, basically blood, and uh, in Chinese medicine, blood and chi move together. So we're trying to get blood and energy to to move to our to our hands. In this case, we're working at our hands. Um, so in you can move in Chinese medicine. You can move your mind. Your intent can move your energy. And like I said, where the energy goes, the blood follows. So when we're, you're doing the movements, you're not just like supposed to be like watching TV or something. You want to just for a few minutes, like focus on what you're doing to get the energy going. Uh, there's kind of, I'm just going to go over kind of the big categories and then we'll start doing the movements. So uh, one, one, so one is your mind intent. So you, you want to focus on having energy and blood going to where you're exercising. Two is, uh, so one one way we can get blood to go to our extremities is by pushing it there and we usually do that by moving our hands throughout like our hands are balloons on the end of strings we're trying to get blood we're trying to push the blood out there uh, the other way now this third way to get blood to go there is we want to squeeze all the blood and that's already there out and then when we relax so that's compressing and then when we relax fresh blood with fresh oxygen rushes in. Um, and the third way is we have the meridian system. So we massage our hands, but when we massage something, uh, we activate both the meridians, the nerves there and, the, and uh, the, the muscles. And we try to, um, we, we try, that activates our, our circulation there. And that makes both relaxing, it both relaxes it, moves it around break up any kind of adhesions in there, and then also lets, uh, lets blood flow through. It draws blood there. Okay, so we're going to start out with the simplest one, which is we're going to uh, focus just on our hands, and you're just going to rub your hands back and forth. We're just trying to warm up our hands. We're trying to get blood to go there by warming it up. So this is, this is part of actually many different meditation practices and things too. So we're just here, just breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, and then breathe in, breathe out. Then what, now your hands, hopefully have gotten at least a little bit warm. There's energy is going to it. You're trying to get it so your hands turn, turn red, pink by rubbing, but also as part of other um, different movements, you rub your hands to get them hot. Now there's chi and blood in your hands. And then you take that, for instance, there's one, I like to do this one. You, you warm your hands up, you put them on your eyes and then you breathe in. And then you feel the energy flowing from your hands through your eyes. And you, you want to visualize some qigong. And, into your brain, just relaxing as you breathe in, that warm energy goes through your eyes, fixing up any kind of problems you have there, and then breathe out. And then I usually put my hands inside my head, and I just absorb that energy, taking it in to, to warm things up and relax my brain and get rid of um, anxiety. So that's one thing, heating your hands, using it on your head. The other thing that they're often used for is you heat your hands, your kidneys are the source of life. So after you heat your hands, you rub your kidneys because you want your kidneys to be warm. Okay, so that's number one, just rubbing your hands, focusing, trying to get energy to go there while you're breathing, right, to warm your hands. All right, 
Number two way was getting um, getting energy. We want blood to get out to your hands, so you want to push blood out there. So during our normal practices, we do several things. So we do one, going to the edge of my chair so I don't hit, hit the chair. So one, you just, when you're doing movements like this, you want to breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. So our hands, are like balloons at the end of the strings and we're throwing it out there and you can maybe feel a little bit of pressure. I can feel my hands, it kind of feels like they're just, they're not swollen. No, I'm swelling slightly. I can feel the blood going out to my fingertips just by doing this. Usually we do this movement in several movements of this one. We do standing in a boat. We do that. There's another variant where you go this way and you come up, you flick your fingers and then come down. This is Phoenix Ascends the Flame. So you come up, flick, come down, flick. We also do it this way, which is uh, you, you flick your fingers. So you try to get blood to go out just by flicking your fingers. Two, three. So usually with this one, I usually have you, in the class, I usually have you do it 30, say 30 times. Right now, like I said, you're just trying to, um, especially if it's your first time, you don't want to hurt your hands. You're trying to, uh, you, movement is the key. So you, by moving the hands, you're opening the joints, letting blood and fluids in. So in this case, we're flicking. So the uh, if you know your meridian system, the meridians, the energy flow in your, in your um, body, half of them start or end in your fingertips. So when you're flicking, you're actually activating your nervous system, your meridian system. And that also stimulates blood to go there. All right, so this is, those are pushing blood out. I'm just trying to explain this to you. So you can make, you can actually make your own set of treatments for yourself. Okay, so the other thing is when you squeeze your hands, what, what you want to do is you want to push the whatever is there out. So we do this, this is called our, our red palms. So what we're doing, we usually push up. It's, we'll, we'll just go straight out so you're here. So you're coming in, you're squeezing your hands. Once again, if this is your first time, you don't have, in the hands, what you're trying to do is you're trying to squeeze as tightly as you can. But like I said, you have to adjust things for your body, especially if this is the first time you're here. So you're squeezing your hands because you're trying to squeeze the blood out. You gotta come down. So you gotta breathe in, breathe out, squeezing. You're squeezing as hard as you can. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. We'll do two more. Breathe in. Squeezing the whole time. You're squeezing as tightly as you can. Breathe out. And then this time, breathe in. And then you're just going to relax your hands and let them drop down. Just let the blood flow back in. So what you want to see, see my, I don't know if you can see in the slide, my palm, my palms are red. You're going to have to take my word for it. But we have a, we do what's called a flash palm. What you just do is you close your hands, you squeeze as hard as you can, and then you open them up. And what, what, you hopefully are seeing is when you open them up, they're white because you squeezed all the blood out. And then when, and then you see they turn red as fresh blood rushes in. So this is one way, like all these things, obviously you, you're going to pick out the, the movements you want to work on. And then you're going to have to do them, you know, three times a day. But, you, you know, rather than like doing an hour of them, 
you know, for two days and then saying it didn't work, what you want to do is maybe three times a day for like do nine times, whatever, whatever you're doing for three times a day over a few months. And then you can see if it's, if it's helping your hands, obviously it's taken, you know, we age over decades. So you're going to have to, you know, work, try to recapture that over months as you're going, going back. You can't just do movements once. It's like it took me uh, 75 years. It was my birthday yesterday. Thank you uh, <laughs> to to get it, to get my body into this shape. So if I want to change it. I'm not going to just be able to do it a few times and then have it change. You're going to have to have, but you also don't have to do two hours a day of hand movements either. So you can just you want to do things that are going to bring blood to your hands. Okay, so that was so we did. Know, rubbing our hands, uh, you know, uh, trying to get blood going there by rubbing, getting getting chi and blood to our hands, focusing, using our mind to push it there while we're breathing. Uh, we did, you know, throwing blood out, squeezing blood out, and then letting it back in. Okay, this is the one everybody's been waiting for because I know the other way is uh, you want to know about like hand massages and things. So, um, what we're what we're going to do, what, what we do is uh, I'm going to show you some movements. There's something called um, iron body and iron hand training. And they're going to, you go and you, you put Chinese herbs on your hand and then hit big bang, bags of beans. I'm not going to have you do that. But when we did that, um, there was a set of hand protocols that you did to get blood to go to your hand to prepare them for the next level. Uh, your hand is full of meridians. Like I said, half the meridians in your body either start or end in your fingertips. Plus there's all along your arms and your hands, there's meridians there. So you wanna massage those, that kind of activates nerve, gets energy to go there and blood and blood follows. Plus just massaging your hands, as you know, uh, can make them feel better. That makes blood activating, rubbing your body makes blood and heat going go there. So I'm going to go through the movements for the for that warm up. Uh, so we're going to start by um, working on our, our fingers. So you're going to go and you're going to rub each. We'll, we'll start with the thumb here. Uh, we're going to rub all the joints. So you just go and you get a little bit closer for this one. Okay, so we're here and you just you're just rubbing circular each joint. We'll just do each one five times. One, two, five. And then go here. One, five. So I'm counting, but what you can do is when you're doing it yourself, you can like breathe in, breathe out, take three, five, nine breaths. And then while you're rubbing it. Next one, two. Because you want to calm yourself when you're breathing, so you can almost do it like you're doing a meditation at the same time you're rubbing your hands. Now the other one, just circular. If we're just trying to get it right there on the joint, just trying to open it up a bit and get some energy there, break up any kind of adhesion, any kind of buildup there. This is the knuckles on the hand where your finger meets your hand, palm. One, two, three, four, five. So now we're going to work on the knuckles, the joints. So you know how when you were a kid, your mother always came up and said, I'm going to get your nose. And so you're going to do that. You're going to make like a, a little a little thing for grabbing your nose. You can do it to your grandkids if you, you know, introduce it as a, a tradition into your family. So I'm taking it and then I'm, let's see, we're uh, here. So I'm just rubbing circularly. So I, I've got <clears throat> it in there. We'll just do, we'll just do three now because so, we have a lot to go through. So one, two, three. Go to the next joint. One, two, three. And now the fingertips, 
that's where the, the meridians begin and end. So we want to activate those. So what you do is you take that. And you, I don't know if you can hear that. I'm trying to, yeah, I, I grab it, and I'm squeezing, and then I kind of pop it off. One of the next finger, one, two, three. And So this is trying to open up the joints of your hand and then activate the tips so they, it draws blood and energy there. And then pop that and then the thumb. And then we have to do the other one too. Two, three. Like I said, when you're doing this yourself, you can pick a number. Usually, uh, I would probably do like nine, five, seven. Usually, you do an odd number, five, seven, nine, and uh, three. Okay, so we tried to open up the joints. This is a whole set. We did this together. Now, the other thing you do is have your hands really loose, and you're just going to hit your hands back and forth. Remember, we're trying to get activate the meridians and the fingernails, so you just lightly hit back and forth. But you want to make sure you're hitting the, the you're hitting the fingernails back and forth. You're trying to wake up those meridians at the end of your fingertips. Just relax, you're trying to let energy get in there. Okay, now we're gonna go, so that did both hands at once. Uh, so next, we're trying to, there's meridians in the center of your hand, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna open your hand and just massage the palm, pushing down the line on your hands. Three, four, Five, one, five. Once again, I, if I were just I were do, doing it myself, I would do more than five times each. So we, we're moving from the fingers onto the palms. And now what we're gonna do is, there's several meridians and we also wanna try to break up any adhesion, let blood flow through our wrists. So we're just gonna loop around and then we're gonna Rub that. Two, three, five, six, seven, and then this one. Six, seven, and then up, about three fingers up. You're just going to rub there. So I just generally, when I'm teaching you movements in, in our class, we just generally massage areas here. And I'll go over to the other side too. But there's actually specific meridians. Some people, some teachers have you massage specific meridians, like there's a meridian here where you open your hand and there's like a slight indentation here. You can rub that. Take the tip of your finger, rub that. If you want to have more exact, somebody teaching more exact, there's on the web page that I made, I have a link to Master Jesse Tsao's. He's got to take, it's $25, but he goes through the individual points as you massage the individual points. The same thing, open your hand right here where, where the bones meet. You can feel there's a slight indentation. Rub that. And then once again, you can do the shake the nine gates. So now we've 
kind of opened things up, activated some of the meridians. We're just going to shake our hands. Loose to try to get some more blood out there. Everything's about getting blood to flow out to your hands. And also the massaging, like I said, that we're trying to break up any, you know, open up our joints to, now we, we want the blood when it gets there to be able to go into our joints and, and uh, you know, carry, carry waste away and deliver nutrients and oxygen to the joints. So um, I don't do this, but I was researching it um, this week. And so another way you can work on your hands, if you don't want to massage the injury, the, the, these generally massage the joints. Uh, the other, another way to do it is, like I said, you can, you can find the specific, like there's three meridians here and a meridian here, two meridians here. You can find all these meridians and you can, um, you can massage those individually and you massage each one a slightly different way, like with the tip of your finger or you just push in. Um, I generally just have you massage your hands like this one is getting all three of those meridians on your wrist. But I did see another way of doing it. Um, they basically have you clap your hands. They're having you massage your entire hand. So you, so you just start out by clapping because this is actually hitting all your meridians and, and your joints sending little vibrations through your hands. But what they do is then, so you first you start out here, then you go and you hit the side of your hand. So you're going around your hands. You're basically trying to cause little, in some sense, micro, <laughs> micro traumas because you're trying to break up any kind of adhesions, any kind of problems there. And, and also that tells your body to rush some blood there. Do like, see three to five times. Now you can do the back of your hands. So you're doing the side of your hands, the palms, or you're doing the back of your hands. And now you make like your karate chopping your hands. And they basically, they had you do this too. So getting, hitting those Meridians in your points. Okay, um, so the other thing we do is it's more uh, you, you do these. The, the, we're we're focusing on the hands, but actually the blood's got to come, and energy has to come through your entire body, come from your center. So another thing that we do is called bone tapping. Uh, which works on your entire arm. And this is also good if you're trying to build up your bone density. Uh, what, what you do is you cause what are called micro fractures just by hitting yourself a tiny bit. Not, don't overdo it. Um, if you, hitting yourself a, a tiny bit, that causes what's called micro fractures, little vibrations. Your body realizes, oh, somebody's stressing my bones. And, and then they, your body sends chemicals to build up your bone density. Then once again, We've had people who, over a year period, found that their bone density is built up. Uh, you can't just do it like once, and it's like, how come my bone density isn't higher? But anyway, so what we do is there's a natural flow. This is this is called. We're going to do bone bone wash, bone tapping, and also, but it's done in in unison with what's called energy washing. Uh, so you've got the meridians, the energy flow goes from your fingertips uh, up the back of your arm. And then when it comes back down, it goes down the front of your arm. So coming, when you're doing the back of your hand, it's going from your fingers to your shoulders. When you're coming around, going back out to your fingers. So. And what you can do is you can visualize, you can do it as a breathing exercise. Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. Okay, so now you can do it, you want to do both sides and then it kind of turns into a little bit of a, 
you know, um, mental exercise too. So you breathe in, you come up the back of your arm, breathe out the front of your arm, and then we get here, breathe in, you go down the back of the other arm, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, and then breathe in, breathe out. So that's just the energy washing. Um, it goes all the way down your body, but this is for your upper body. We're working on our hands today, so we're trying to get energy to go in there. And that's the, you can do it like when you're taking a shower or something, you can wash yourself this way, and that way you're doing energy washing as well as washing your body. All right, now in unison with that, we're going to do the bone tapping. The bone tapping does two things where, like I said, it makes these micro fingers in your in your body while you're tapping to build up your bone density. But you're also hitting, there's meridians all along here. You're, you're hitting the meridians at the same time. You're, you're hitting in the direction of your energy flow and you're activating the meridians, which is trying to activate a little bit more energy flow. So what we're going to do is just start at your fingers here. Going, remember, we're going up the back of our arm. So since we're doing bone tapping, this is slightly here, so that we're hitting with our fingertips. But then when we get here, we're going to go on our, these are round bones. They make red blood cells. When we get here, we're going to make like a little bird's beak. And we're going to, these are flat bones. They make white blood cells. So when you get down here, this is building up your, you know, um, uh, you know, different systems in your body, healing systems, come up the back. So now we're going to tap down, tap the center, getting those white blood cells. And then we come here. You want to hit your armpit too, because what you're trying to do is you want to try to get, uh, push a little bit of fluids out of those lymph glands, get the lymph fluid flowing it's a passive system or lymphatic system so you want to you have to either move or massage it to get um, to get fluids going and then the time to go down so you're going to breathe in switch to finger tapping with your bird's beak breathe in breathe out Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. Rub your hands together. You can, we do all these things. <laughs> in traditional Chinese medicine, there's a lot of stuff where they observe what people did and uh, so like when people were having problems with their hands, they would go like this. So they then studied whether massaging your hands that way, you know, so these are like, um, so they developed, they developed rather through observation and then exper experimentation. So, um, so for instance, like when you're washing your hands, you're coming up, and what are you doing? You're rubbing those meridians there coming up, squeezing your hands, maybe rubbing, rubbing the meridians down the center. Um, you can put your hands together, just various different things. You, you uh, our tagline is, you know, movement is the key. What you have to do is if you do nothing, you ossify, everything gets worse. Uh, uh, you have to actually move your body to get the fluids some of a lot of some of our systems are active, like our heart. We don't have to move to keep our heart beating, but like our lymphatic system and our energy systems, if you don't move, you you stagnate. So you have to keep doing things, like when you're when you're watching TV or something, you can <laughs> you know rub your meridians. Um, so the main part is uh, so. There were a lot of different movements. You can pick up movements which you feel. There's one more I wanted to show you, um, one more kind of movement. Um, 
but you, what you want to do is you want to pick out something where you do them several times a day just for a few minutes, but at the beginning, you don't want to overdo it. You want to check to see, uh, you, you, want, you want blood and energy to go there, but you don't want to like hurt your hands, tear, tear, tear things, cause yourself pain, or, or you know, if you get real, like when you're hitting something, you don't want to um, you know, damage your bones or your joints, but you want, to, you want to massage them to get blood to go there. So you have to observe at the beginning make sure how things are going. And then as things, as you start feeling an effect, you can say, oh, this one seems to be working for me. And you can focus more on that one. There's one other kind of movement, which is um, holding hand, hand positions. Um, so the one that I find that's kind of interesting, when I do this after I, I just hold hands, so your hands are coming up. And what you're doing, it's like your grip, you're grabbing a ball just with the tips of your fingers. Oh, here I have. So if you happen to have brass training rings around your house, <laughs> but this shows you your, what you're doing is you're you're holding it. See, you're not you're not doing this one. This is this is like a panther claw. That is. Uh, if you hold your hand like a pen, what you do is you pull your hand in and make it as flat as possible, and then you squeeze. So this is one of the ones where you're squeezing fluids out, but you're also putting stress on your joints, trying to open up those joints. So this is a panther claw. So you can hold it, say, for 15 seconds. Breathe in. Breathe out, you're squeezing, breathe in, breathe out, and then breathe in, breathe out, and then relax. And then, so there's that one. See, when I do these, when I get done, I know things are opening up and blood are getting in there because my, my knuckles itch <laughs> when I do it. So the other way, so this was, this is for a panther. You're squeezing your hand, your hand is flat. So the other one is, this is a dragon, but this is what you do is you're squeezing just with your fingertips. And it's the same thing, except you're not using anything. So you're like doing isometric. Once again, you're it's kind of like you're squeezing something, you're, but you're trying to push just all your focus goes into your fingertips. You do that for 15 seconds. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. You're pushing. You're trying to squeeze like you're trying to squeeze a grapefruit, but just with your very fingertips. Breathe in. Breathe out. Okay, that also activates, like I can feel when I do that, I can feel the tendons in my arms, in the back of my arms. So you're trying to build up your wrists, wrist flexibility, wrist strength, and get energy flowing. Um, that's probably about 200 more movements than you were hoping to see, but I wanted to show you um, different movements. Um, I guess what I'll do is on the website, I'll make a few things, like maybe a few five minutes Tai Chi things where uh, this was a learning lesson. But I'll I'll maybe do like the the iron palm warm up and just have one where I count and you do it. So if you want to go do just that, you decide you like that one, you can go through that with me. Um, and so I'll, uh, I'll do that over. I'll try to do that over next week. Just make I'll put this online for you, and then you can rewatch this. But then we'll be on the website. There'll be the different individual ones if you say oh I like I like the you know the clapping ones you know I, I, I'm just gonna you know go along with that one they'll be like three to five minutes long all right uh, so what we're gonna do is I forgot to do this at the beginning what we do is we want to set our mind when we start so we reach up and we gather energy we're supposed to do this 
when we came in. It was called pulling down the heavens and you breathe out. Breathe in, gather energy from the earth, gather it from the heavens. Breathe out. One more time, breathe in. Breathe out and then clap. Body mind, because we did congratulate ourselves because we did something good for our body and our mind. Um, what we're going to do right now is we're going to have a short question and answer. Otherwise, um, if you want, this is going to be on our website on the um, Sunday review page. And uh, like I said, I'll make up a, a set of mini lessons too to, to go through them. So you can, if you want to have a practice lesson as opposed to a learning lesson, you can watch those. Uh, once again, so our site is Quality of Life Now, Q O L Now dot com. Um, if you'd like to give a donation, we're always uh, thankful for anyone who wants to donate. Uh, we do have some expenses giving these, um, and uh, just may we may or may not have have a question and answer period. I'm, uh, I'm waiting for the control room to call down. I'll give them another minute here because there's a there's a two minute lag actually between when I say something and when you see it. So the control room might not be quite aware. And here they go. Hello. Peggy? Hello? Hi, um, what's good for carpal tunnel? Um, um <laughs> oh, sorry, the question is what's good for carpal tunnel? Um, I, I should have, I'll, I'll, I'll actually put that in as in one of the five minute things I'm going to make. Um, when I was watching the uh, Master Tsao's Meridian thing, just in, ge just in general, these should be, uh, offer some relief, but there were actually some specific meridians that he suggested that you push and massage for a carpal tunnel, but they were up in the wrist instead of, instead of the hands. But I, I, right now, I don't remember exactly what they are. I'll put, I'll, I'll put those on. Um, I, I had carpal tunnel syndrome once, actually. I didn't massage those points, but I take martial arts, and the, we do, like, iron palm training. So um, what I did is I, I went and I hit hit certain things. I can't tell you to do this because you actually need somebody to train you how to do it. But you we, we, you hit beans or you hit sand and, and then when you get done, your fingers are all swollen up. And within two weeks, I was I had it for several months and I did the iron palm training and it went away. Um, what does that have to do with the question? So, but when I did the training, I noticed that when I stopped, my hands were all red and then my my fingers were a bit swollen, but swollen with blood, not, you know, um, and so what appeared to happen was by getting blood to go to my hands, um, a, lot, a lot of blood to go to my hands, it, it let my hands heal. Um, so that's, that's all I've got for that one. All right. How many, how many times can I do bone tapping and for how long? How many times can I do bone tapping and for how long? Um, uh, usually, I, I, I guess I don't do, really do it for more than five minutes. You're actually, um, you, you don't have to do it for a really long period of time because what you're trying to do is, like I said, you're trying to tell your body that you're stressing your bones. And so, <laughs> You don't, you, you don't have to do it like for hours after you just do it for probably five, 10 minutes, I would say at the most, five minutes is probably plenty. You, your body is, is getting better. Uh, when, when we do it in there, there's lessons, bone tapping lessons on our site. Um, when we do that, we, we start out with the hands. We, we do a little bit of energy rubbing on our abdomen and then you want to do it also on your legs because your legs are your are the biggest bones in your body. So you want to be tapping those two. Like I said on the on the site, there's there's actually several lessons on how to do bone tapping. Um, 
So, uh, sorry, there was a lot of static there. So, um, and you could also work up at the beginning, you should just be lightly tapping your bones and then um, And what you do is you take a sock like this and you put mung beans in. Uh, I guess they've got to be mung beans. Mung beans, when they, I guess, break up, give off dust that's medicinal that goes into your body while you're tapping. So anyway, so what I do is I put some mung beans in a sock. And so after, you know, I've been doing it for a while. like, And so then you can do that if you want to have slightly more vigorous So, so you can start it with your hands, and once you feel like, because you don't want to bruise yourself. So once you feel like you're hitting yourself enough, then you can use use a sock. And then the next level is you go to the Shaolin Temple, and they they hit you. They start up by hitting you with sticks, and then they hit you with iron rods. But that's the next lesson. Okay. Uh, sorry that you were all kind of garbled. What? Yeah, so you can do bone tapping and can you do bone tapping and other parts of your body? Can you bo do bone tapping on other parts of your body? Uh, yeah. So like I said, we have lessons. You, usually you do it also on your legs, especially you can if if you don't want to do the whole thing like but you, you no longer have to ever wait in line because now when you're waiting in line you can be doing all kinds of qigong thing. Abdominal breathing. The other one is you can, if you if you're just standing around waiting for something to happen, you take your fist and hit the top of your femurs. That that's uh, activating, trying to build up your bone density just by standing there. Um, you know, you can. Uh, some of the things I guess the other people online will think you're a little weird if you start hitting yourself too much, but but a lot of the breathing and and different kind of. Balance things you can actually do while you're waiting in line. Okay, and so yes, bone dapping you can do all of your body. Any other questions? For trigger finger. Say that again. So what about trigger fingers? Any suggestion? Um. Yeah, I don't know what trigger finger is. <laughs> is that from like pulling the trigger too much? I I I don't know. It, if generally. Um, so if you have a specific problem, um, generally you have to work with your physical therapist. I'm not actually working with you personally right now. So like, I don't know your medical history and what happened. And, you know, uh, sometimes people say they have something, but they actually have something else because they didn't quite understand the, the medical difference between the two terms. So just generally the movements that we've done today are going to bring also, the movements we teach in the in the classes are to just generally get blood and fluids flowing through your body, and to do uh, uh, different breathing exercises to relieve anxiety from your daily life, and um, do movements which build up the the health of your um, internal organs, and then do some stretching and, and turning to keep up your mobility. So. Uh, so what's that got to do with trigger fingers? So if you just do some of these, um, even though I don't know specifically what, that, if you, I would try just doing some of the hand movements if you're having problems with fingers in your hands and try to see if you can find some that you start feeling some relief. Like I said, you have to do them for at least several weeks before you would feel something. You can't just kind of do them once and feel it. All right, any other questions? Um. So, what's good for old thumb injury with pain between joint at risk, at wrist, and where thumb joints hang? Okay. Joint so, okay. So once again, that's a specific problem about what the question was. What What do you do about an old thumb um, injury? And there's a lot of pain where the wrist joints, the hand. Um, you know, I, I, I can't really help for very like specific things because I actually don't know what happened and 
you know, what, what other kind of things you're doing. Just in general, I said in the movements that we did today, just in general, if you do them, like I can feel my hands are like slightly tingling from the things that we did today and I can feel my joints and things. So, you know, you, you, you basically want to make your hands in general healthier, just like our movements make your, your body in general healthy and that will should help with your specific problems. Um, you have to actually kind of be working with somebody for a while um, if you want to work on specific things because so we're, I'm just trying to give you general things that will generally, in this case, increase the health of your hands, get blood flowing out there. Um, can we do bone tapping lessons sometime? Um, can we do bone tapping lessons sometimes? Uh, two things. <laughs> um, one, one thing is we do seasonal training. Oh, we're, well, one is there's already some bone tapping lessons on, the, on our website. QOLnow.com. There's different courses and different things I've set up. So there's some there. Um, also, we do seasonal training, and so we do different movements every season so that over the course of the year, you work through all parts of your body. So uh, bone tapping, that's we usually do that during the winter. Um, that's one of our winter movements, which, of course, uh, there's five seasons because there's two summers, early and late summer, in Chinese, from Chinese, five Chinese element system. And we're in the autumn season, which is metal. Uh, we're doing metal. You're trying to work on your lungs and uh, also try to metal. You cut things away, so you're trying to calm yourself by getting rid of excess things that you need. Uh, we're going to do, uh, so they're 10 weeks long since there's five of them. And, and we're going to start winter probably in four weeks or something. And then during the winter, we usually do the bone tapping things. Uh, but there's already bone tapping lessons from last winter on the website. Anything else? Um, is it safe to do tapping in the armpits due to all the lymph nodes? Will the tapping cause the nodes to swell? Okay, uh, tapping, is it okay to do the tapping in the lymph nodes that will cause it to swell in your armpits. Um, well, first of all, <laughs> so one, you we do movements like when you're doing this, you're lifting and raising your arm because you're trying to get you're trying to get some movement, some pressure onto those lymph glands because you want the the fluids to move through. You you want to carry waste away and let fresh fluids come in, bring nutrients. And so we do some movements uh, to try to get um, some pressure on those lymph nodes so fluids are moving through. So for the bone tapping, usually we come up and the, I, I always tap because I'm trying to get fluids from here to start moving. But that said, don't, <laughs> don't like hit yourself really hard. Because yeah, if you if you do things too hard, you can you can cause some problem. We're just trying to get some. It's kind of a gentle tapping. You're you're trying to activate. You're trying to get a little bit. The, like I said, you're trying to get the fluids moving out of there. You know, by uh, out of that area, so you can so you can carry away waste and bring fresh fresh fluids in there. And the answer is uh, it's okay to tap tap your lymph glands. Just, just don't go crazy about it. You, you have to, to, you have to watch your body. I'm not there to watch you do things. So you have to. That's why when you start, you do things more, uh, more gently, and you don't do, you don't do like ten thousand hits. Like you start out maybe doing, you know, doing it five, seven, nine times, and then, you know, you're just trying to activate things.